The two significant storylines in, in this movie are that uh, movie world comes to Downton Abbey. Uh, a film is, uh, is going to be uh, filmed at the castle and uh, Robert of course can't bear the idea of this so fortuitously the other thread of the story is that uh, mother Violet has inherited a villa in the south of France uh, in slightly mysterious circumstances and so half the family go off there to investigate and to, uh, and to find out more about this inheritance. Working with Elizabeth is, well, frankly, she's my second wife because uh, we've been married on screen uh, on and off over the last 11 years, and uh, it's the third time we've actually been married in a show. So we have a certain shorthand, let's put it that way. And uh, uh, it's just a delight. It's like, I wouldn't say like putting on a favourite pair of slippers because that would be rude to Elizabeth, but she'll know what I mean. Working with the same team of people over the last uh, decade, uh, well, it speaks for itself, the fact that we have managed to sustain it for that long, the fact that we, uh, we aren't throwing chairs at each other. Um, if we were, we wouldn't have got together to make the movie, and uh, I think it's a great testament to, to Julian Fellows and Gareth Neem, our, our producers, and, and, and Liz Truebridge, the fact that they've managed to keep this ship um, afloat uh, and that all, the, all hands on deck um, when it came to it was, was really important because if, if, I think if, uh, if half the cast had said, no, I'm not interested anymore, it wouldn't have happened. And uh, so to have got everyone back together for the second time, I think says, says it all, that we all get on well, that we know the show is beloved and, uh, and, there, and Julian's still got stories to tell. So it's been wonderful to get back together. Well, Maggie Smith is a, is a phenomenon, let's face it. Uh, and uh, I think I was, I was intimidated on the very first day of filming with her back in 2010. Uh, and I was intimidated on the last day of filming with her in, in 2021. 20, so, uh, you know, she's, she's been consistent, consistently intimidating and scary and uh, impressively brilliant throughout. She just, you just have to raise your game whenever you're on set with her because she takes no prisoners. And uh, Julian unashamedly gives her the best lines and she delivers them with, uh, with laser, uh, laser sharp precision and um, makes the rest of us look like amateurs. So uh, what's not to like? We have Natalie Bay um, playing Madame de Montmirail and her son is played by Jonathan Zakai. Um, and they were, it was wonderful to welcome them into the cast. And uh, of course we were filming on their home turf so they felt very relaxed and we felt, uh, uh, we felt like uh, invaders in their country. Um, but they were incredibly generous to us and, and we, uh, we tried to make them feel welcome at, at High Clear as well. Um, and then in the, in the other storyline with the, with, the, with the movie that comes to be made at Downton, we have Dominic West and Hugh Dancy and uh, Laura Haddock, and uh, they bring wonderful uh, variety and spice to, to that section of the story. Well, as you might expect, Robert's uh, reaction to the idea of, 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 of a movie being made at Downton, is, he finds the whole notion just despicable. Um, he, he's very suspicious of the moving picture and, uh, and uh, wants to vacate as quickly as possible. <laughs> well, of course, Downton has travelled away from home in the past, uh, particularly to, to Annick in Northumberland and, uh, and to Scotland as well. But was the, this was the first time we'd been, uh, been on the abroad. And, uh, <clears throat> of course, that was delicious and, and, and fun. And to go to the Riviera, uh, particularly in that era, um, when the French Riviera was sort of opening up as a playground for the rich and famous, uh, and in the summertime too. I mean, it was already a, a haven in the winter um, for the wealthy of France, but to, to actually uh, go there in the summer was sort of anathema until the movie stars 
Um, people like Scott Fitzgerald, you know, used to you know vacation there and made it popular. Uh, and so, so that's a sort of um, uh, that gives a real texture to, to, to the story. And I think the balance between between being at the castle and being in France is, is beautifully played out. Um, but gosh, it's, it was exotic uh, to say the least. Even even to go there in 2021 was pretty good fun. The linchpin of the story of going to France really is because uh, a villa has been left to to Violet in uh, in in, uh, in the Marquis de Montmirail Senior's will, and it's a bit of a mystery as to why. And so we go there to a meet the uh, uh, meet the current owners who have been disinherited in effect, and um, and to find out more. He d did actually get round to directing it eventually, and did a fantastic job. So no, really, he, you know, it all, the spirit of any movie comes from the director. And if you've got a director who is enthusiastic and kind and, uh, and wants everyone to do, give of their best, then that trickles down to every department. And um, it, uh, it, it certainly made for a very good atmosphere. I think if I knew what the enduring appeal of Downton Abbey was, then I would have bottled it and uh, you know retired years ago. But um, uh, I don't know quite. Uh, I think it comes down to a combination of so many factors. But I think, I think Julian. I've always said this that Julian writes from a default position that people try to be good, uh, even if they do bad things. And so I think there is a benevolence underneath the show. Uh, the the undercurrent of the show is about. Um, uh, a community uh, trying to do its best, uh, albeit a slightly strange community in this cloistered world. Characters that you can identify with uh, and, and it's landed well in each country around the world that it's played in. So I think there's a universality about the characters and the, and the scrapes they get into. Uh, and if you're bored of one character, another one will be along in 20 seconds. I was very, very pleased when I read this particular one. It's so fun. I mean, that that's really the, the big word for me with it. It's just an absolute enjoyable escape and, and really witty. So, so that was a pleasure. The idea of a movie coming to being and uh, to be shot in Downton Abbey was not something that I would have expected, and and that is such a pleasure. It's um, it's just delightful to see the um, what is now very old-fashioned movie making, but you know, for the family, uh, very newfangled people and culture invading their house, and so there's a lot of fun to be had there. It's such a privilege to live a part and live it next to somebody else for as long as we have done. I mean, we have we have grown along with our characters. Um, I mean, most things I'd done professionally prior to Downton Abbey were movies or films or, I mean, films or plays or short stories that had a beginning, middle and end. So it was a completely different challenge to live with a character alongside somebody else for so long, and it's very rewarding. It's it's an incredible experience and and a real privilege. Hugh has never let me down. He um, because what he's often given is really difficult stuff to pull off. I mean, Robert can be a little bit of an idiot at times. Uh, very stuffy at times, very much of a throwback. But in Hugh's hands, there's so much heart in it always. Um, so much, I hate this word, but lovability. And I don't, I don't think there are very many actors that have, could have pulled it off. Well, we're very lucky as a group, um, either lucky or somebody was very clever when they put us together because um, it's it's a, an amazing group of people. I mean, honestly, you know, we all 
live for this. And most of the time it doesn't happen where you just have a, a group that are, they're all very different kind of talents, but they're all so disciplined. I mean, to do an ensemble show like this, you need to be because it takes a lot of patience. You have to be a total star one minute and an extra the next. And you have to have a personality that can make peace with those two realities. And everybody in this cast can do that and, um, and, and, and still be really fond of each other at the end of a day. And, and I don't think there are very many long-term series that you can say that about the cast. So it's been really one of the great privileges of my life. It's not only Maggie, it's everything she represents. I mean, um, she's a person who worked with Laurence Olivier and Vivian Lee and, uh, and her, her that, that's all in her being. And, and um, you know, you can't fake that or act it. Um, it she uh, just, I, I don't. I don't think she's even herself aware of what it is she does that people love so much. Um, and and it, it's it, you know we just all of us bask in that reflected glow of um, of literally just surviving so many years of life experience and frankly show business. <laughs> Well, it was um, incredibly re refreshing. I mean, um, I, I suppose it's such an obvious thing, but it still kind of surprised me how much the different light affects things, the different smell in the atmosphere. And that's all a lot of fun to see these characters in, um, in something that looks so exotic and different. It's just. I can't think of a better word than it's just fun. The costumes are, you know, really exquisite. Um, and I, I, it's just a joy to just stand there and have them be built on my frame, which is literally what happens. But Anna's sense of color and her sense of character as expressed by a costume is really much better than most costume designers. She doesn't just think about the clothes, she really thinks about the character and, and the note that character plays in the orchestra of the whole thing. She has a real uh, overview and, and a real intelligent, insightful, um, and, and, and Nosh, who does the, the makeup and hair, is the same. You know, they really understand the story and the characters. I was just completely blown away by his skill and confidence and vision and how well he handled these actors. Some, you know, we've been doing it a long time and it's not so easy to come in as a new person and suggest a way of doing things. And um, he always did it uh, in a way that actors could hear and respect and and actually was incredibly helpful and I think they absolutely loved him and so I, I was just so proud. Well I think it's changed over the years. I think when people first watched the show it was a real escape and a comfort to go back to another era. I think now it's an escape and a comfort to go back to the era that we were in when we were watching the show and to remember what that felt like. So either way, it's escape and comfort and um, a feeling of security. I think that's what the show gives people. Everybody has missed having a place to go. Um, I mean, we have now spent so long looking, a lot of the time, just on individual little screens, and a lot of the time for many hours of the day. Uh, and 
after a while, there's something psychologically very dry about that. So all I can really, the only person I can really speak for is myself. I miss having a community experience where a group of people sit down and they have an experience together and they walk out and they've all been through more or less the same thing and then can talk about it. And um, boy, it feels good to get back to it. And I think, well, I hope that um, this will be something that they'll, be, they'll have an appetite for because of the fact that it's not bad news. <laughs>
come on the show. Um, and and this one particularly, of course, there was a lot of new faces and um, uh, and great characters. So of course you've got Laura Haddock, who plays Myrna Dalgleish, who's the, act, the Hollywood actress, who everyone's so excited at the fact that she's there, this huge movie star. Um, and it was really fun watching her, you know, her performance as, as the film went on, because it's such a brilliant character and so funny. Um, and then, of course, Dominic West and Hugh Dancy. I mean, it was really lovely to have to have them on the show, and they're so you know such great actors. I think it was really nice for Mary to just be to sort of forget her own life for a, for a bit, and you know, be part of this movie, which I think that she's really excited about, and. Um, it's fun, it's like, you know, there's something really exciting happening at Downton. So this time around, there were less um, tiaras. Um, the first film, with the royal visit, there was a lot of elaborate clothes and dinner scenes and the ball and everything. Whereas this time around, I mean, for, for Mary, there was more daytime wear, which actually, personally, I prefer. I love, I love the costumes in the daytime. Um, and, you know, Anna, Anna, our costume designer, she, I, I feel that every single time we go back to Downton, she manages to step it up another notch. I mean, she is incredible. And I'm always really excited to go to those fittings. And often that's the first day, really, of the job is, you know, you read the script and then the first first day is the fitting and I really look forward to them and, and and look forward to seeing what pieces she's found. He has such, Simon has such a brilliant rapport with actors and, and not just because we know him so well, you know, even with actors he doesn't, he didn't know very well on Downton. There's just such a, he gives such specific notes, but they're very, they're, he's not a director that kind of um, kind of, you know, makes you sort of try too many different ways or it's like very, very simple, really, really simple. So he'll, you know, he'd say things to me like, just, you know, do it again, but don't, you know, just keep your eyes on the other actor. On, you don't have to move or emote too much of what you feel in that scene. Just keep it very, very still. And for me, it was a bit of a lesson in film acting because of course you are huge on that screen and I, I think that Simon really you know he, he he really encourages you just to trust that what you're saying is enough and you don't have to over emote um, so that was that was lovely I loved that and sometimes really challenging which I really enjoyed um, he's also just the loveliest man and he like you said he is just so enthusiastic and loves Downton I think ultimately, Downton is about love. And I think that's universal. I think that that is why people love it. I think in the end, it comes down to love and family um, and characters that re have real heart and that, that people can really relate to. I think every single character, somebody can relate to or relate to their story, something that's happened to them, even though it's set in the 1920s, um, it's relatable. Um, but ultimately, I think it is about love. It's definitely worth seeing it on the big screen. Um, I, I really think that Downton was probably made for it originally. I think that it's it was always very cinematic. And so now that we've had the opportunity to put it on the big screen, um, it's the place to watch it, I think. Um, and it's the experience, isn't it? I think we've, that's what we all love so much about cinema, is being able to just zone out and turn off your phone and, and be swept into this, you know, other world. The main sort of uh, in a sense, permanent adjustment 
was that it was clear that Mary was really taking over as the boss at Downton and rather taking the reins from her father, uh, which is a theme we go on with. She's uh, very much in charge. I mean, it's a courteous arrangement. They're not rivals in any sense, but uh, one of the jobs of being in a hereditary business is to accept that it is hereditary and there comes a time when your usefulness is diminished uh, and the moment has come to hand on. And I think uh, that we played in the first film and we play in the second. Cora and Robert were in a sense quite passive in the first film. I mean, their job was obviously hosting the King and Queen and they did that. Uh, with good grace, but I think they're a bit more active in this one. They have uh, a more uh, difficult emotional journey, both of them. And um, and I think that's nice, you know. I mean, I did deliberately try to give people a bit more of a run for their money if they hadn't had so much to do in the first film. So now I think that everyone's had a go. Um, and, and I'm, you know, I'm pleased with it. I think it's turned out well. He has a very strong grasp of narrative, which is always a useful gift. But in things like Downton, uh, it's an essential one because it's very much multi-narrative. Some of the stories are big and go right through the film. Some are quite short and are told in only three scenes. But uh, there are all these stories interlocking, and there are many scenes that serve more than one story, uh, which is why I always say when we have our read-through, you know, at the beginning of the whole thing, I always say to the actors, you must take responsibility for your own story because it is an impossible job for the director or the cameraman to, to be concentrating on every single narrative that has a beat within this scene in the ballroom, within this dinner, whatever it is. The comedy I like is real life comedy. And, and in all our lives, we all know people who are funnier than other people that we know. And they, they have the gift of making phrases that, that are funny but they don't take you out of the real situation. They're funny to a degree, but they're not fall about white or farce. So you can return to the truth of the narrative situation without any difficulty. And that is, I think, the level of comedy that sits well in a kind of ongoing family saga, which is really what Downton is. I was lucky with Maggie Smith because I'd worked with her before and, and the character I wrote that she played in Gosford Park was quite similar to Violet Grantham in Downton. Um, she's a very uh, a rewarding actress because she has a great gift, well she has many gifts, but she has a great gift that she can be very funny one minute and two minutes later have you crying. And she does it without changing into someone else. Lesser actors turn into someone else when they shift gear. But she doesn't. She remains very true to herself. And she gets, or of her own character, and she can get laughs as that character, but also tears. You're writing to fit actors. And I mean, uh, for me, uh, Leslie Nickel is a very funny actress, uh, but I didn't really know her. I'd seen her in East is East before she got the part, uh, and which she's very good in, but uh, it didn't show what she was capable of in comedy terms. And uh, the, the more I realized she was funny, the more I wrote for the fact she was funny. Uh, and you know, and you learn other actors are very good at emotional scenes and uh, they're good at making you cry or they're, you know, whatever. And you, well, I, quite deliberately 
give them material that I know they will shine in uh, because it gives you a lot of high points. I'm part of a dying breed who believes that one of the jobs, at least, of the entertainment industry is to entertain. Uh, we're a diminishing number, but I, I want people to watch Downton and enjoy it. I want them to go to this movie and have a nice time and laugh and cry uh, and go out and have a decent dinner and get back home and feel they've had a good evening. That, that suits me. That's my, that's my goal. Uh, and, and if people say, but is it enough for you just to entertain? Uh, the answer is yes. And, and, you know, I hope every now and then I make them think about the disparity of background in an unequal society, or I make them think of the difficulties of being homosexual in a period when it was still illegal, or, you know, we touch on things. But that's not the prime purpose. The prime purpose is to give them a really good evening. Well, of course, when you realise that there's a new film coming and there's a script about to come over, you try not to go, where am I, where am I? And, and I resisted that. And um, it was, it's just lovely because it's you just think, oh my gosh, this is different, it's totally different, we're going in a different... It is a new era and there's a different um, vibe to it all together. I mean, it's fantastic, fresh, new idea. And it puts every all the characters in a different kind of conundrum, which is really good fun, yeah. I suppose the two main things, the sort of themes, or if you like, in the film are literally Hollywood comes to Downton, which who'd, who'd ever imagine that happening? And that brings all kinds of chaos and romance and fights and God knows what. And the other half is that um, the family go over to the most exquisitely beautiful villa in France. So we see them playing around on the south, in the, on the Riviera, which is gorgeous. Apart from working with Sophie McShearer, which has been a joy always, um, I have to say the scenes we do with Paul Copley have always been so lovely. He's a wonderful actor, I think, and he, I love his character. Um, he brings such a kind of warmth and honesty to it. I just love Mr. Mason. Um, and what's, it's been very slow, but it's very clear that they are uh, interested in each other, fond of each other, but quite correctly, in at that time, a woman like Mrs. Patmore would be very cautious and shy about declaring how she was feeling. He's been a little less shy, and very gradually, he's laid a few hints that he might find her an interesting and nice woman. And I think she's finding that very exciting and lovely to hear, but neither of them are the sort that are going to leap into action. So it's the slowest burn, but i am it's kind of sweet, I think. Well, I think all the characters downstairs have a different view, very slightly different view of, of what they feel about this invasion. I mean, Daisy is completely over the moon, besotted, wetting her what's it's because she's so excited. Because she's, she's you know, the, in those days, they would go and watch movies and they would be, these would be, I mean, it's a bit like goddesses walking into the house. I mean, it would be mind blowing for them. And Anna Bates is the same. You know, they all have little cuttings of their favorite stars. Mrs. Patmore, not so thrilled, really, because she always uh, is aware of people coming and disrupting her regime, I think, and, and she doesn't know what to expect, and she's always just more cautious. She's not as twinkly about it all. She's a little bit more practical. Well, it was interesting having Simon come and direct this because I only knew him vaguely, and he, he said to me very early on, he said, well, this has always been Elizabeth's gig, Elizabeth McGovern being his wife. Um, 
So we've known him, but I've not known him very well. And what he did, which was really sweet, I thought, and helpful and respectful and kind, was he invited everybody to have a coffee with him early on, just so he could sit down and chat. And he said, really, all I want to say is, um, you know what you're doing. I know you know your character very well, and I'm not going to be in your way, but I want you to know I'm there to help if you need help. And that's what more could you ask, actually, from a director. When you have such a good writer as Julian, um, you, you're lucky enough to, to know that, that he'll have a radar, possibly, about what, what your strengths are. And it wasn't just me, it was everybody, for sure. But what he sensed very early on was two things, I suppose. One was Sophie playing Daisy and I were very close, very quickly. We got on really, really well. We have a very, you know, I adore her. I think she's wonderful as a person and as an actress, and and we respect each other very much. So there was, there was a, a lot, there was a lot of, you know, places to go with that, and he did. So he developed, as we know, that that relationship. But also, we also have the same sense of humour, and um, so he picked up on that. And, and it is my good fortune that he wrote me. I mean, he did say once, he said, I sort of gave her the downstairs version of, of the Dowager's wit, you know, a kind of different version, but, but he did. He gave me some killer lines, for which I'm very grateful. <laughs> what I do know is that it has been of some help to many people. During the pandemic, for sure, people have rewatched it, and it's given them a sort of comfort and a, you know a sense of visiting family, almost feeling cosy in some way. I don't know, reassured. I don't know. People will have different um, feelings about it, but I also know, even through the series, there were more more critical points in people's lives where this became important. I mean, to be really at, at an extreme. You know, we had a family who, who, they were losing their mother in a hospice and the only thing they could really do together was watch Downton, which they did. And, and she was able to see it and be comforted by it. And they will always remember that. That was something that just aided them through a really horrible time. And um, that's, that's a real privilege to be part of something that would have that effect on people. Well, I wouldn't want anybody to see the film other than on the big screen because it's usually pr pretty exciting visually, but this time it's visually exciting with bells on, to be honest, because you've got lots going on at the castle and uh, then you've got France, you know, and it's stunning, it's absolutely stunning. It's lovely to see that those actors out there doing their thing and looking amazing. Um, so I think it's... It's, it's a feel-good movie. There's a lot that will make people, and it's funny, it's killer funny. Um, and it's entertaining and it's, it's, it will be a very happy distraction, I think, for, for a couple of hours after a time when people have been really pushed and feeling, you know, low and lonely and, and cut off. This hopefully will be a, something that will make them smile and make them feel a bit hugged. Well, it's lovely being part of an ensemble because I come from a theatre background and it is a bit like being part of a company, um, a theatre company, because we have the young ones who 10 years ago were starting and then the middle and then the older ones. So um, uh, that is, that is a, a, an environment that I'm very used to working in big companies because I've worked in the theatre in, in big companies. And um, when we get together again, it's lovely because we, when you work with people over a period of time, you have a sort of shorthand. You don't have to introduce yourself or gauge what sort of person they are. You know each other. So life is very much, and work is very much quicker because you know how to respond to people. Also, you know your character better, and that gets better as the years go by. And Julian writes for each individual character. He just doesn't write a generic script. It's very precise. 
and everyone has their own point of view and their own life. So it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting thing to do. Over, I've never done anything over that period of time except in the theatre. Anna, who did my, our costumes, um, made some wonderful... It, it's a wonderful period for hats. And um, I do wish we wore hats more because when you see everyone in hats and they're wonderful creations, um, they're great uh, to see together. And you wonder why people don't wear hats anymore. Of course, we don't have the life where we wear hats. And people now wear those little tiny hats with a feather sticking out of them. But these are enormously wonderful creations and set at very good angles. I mean, they knew how to make a hat work. We have more time to do an hour and a half's film. And um, uh, uh, um, that is the main thing. Um, so the setups and the what you achieve in a day, of course, it never stops because the, the production values are much bigger because you've got that time. So you can do enormous weddings and you can do um, big dinner parties and you can do balls and you can do things, but all that is a, a not from the actors, but from the, the set designers and the costumes and everything that go into what we actually finally uh, wear and, um, and we exist in takes an enormous amount of time. I think what I enjoy most is is the story. St it's got a strong storyline, and uh, I think it's that's part of its success because it deals with everyday life of these people. So ev an audience enjoy that world. You're taken into the world of of Danton, and um, I'm not entirely sure it was. In fact, I know it wasn't as quite as nice in the reality. But the relationships of the people um, are very true, I think. And uh, people have the, their favorite um, characters. So they follow those characters and they follow those storylines. And people, there are, uh, he writes, you know, so many storylines in one episode. And that is, I think, the enduring appeal of this. Show. Also the look of the thing, I mean, it looks, wonderful it's wonderful to see it visually it's it's a it's a marvelous creation well i think it's the, the spectacle it's it's a wonderful spectacle also it's very humorous and it i think it will make people very happy to see it they'll also say hello to the people they know i think that the experience is one of 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 of, um, of a carrying on the tradition of, of of Danton, but with some new faces that they will know, and um, also the storylines which will they'll be amused with. And also we go to France, and there's a whole section when we go to the south of France, or I didn't, but they did, and uh, um, there is some. It, 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 it opens the door to a whole other part of their lives. Yes, I think they will enjoy it immensely. One of the great treats has always been when you get a new script for Denton, when we were filming the show as a series. And then the first movie we were like, how's he gonna you know, make this cinematic? And of course he did beautifully. And then we were like, can he do it again? And he has, and it's, it's an amazing gift that Julian has to bring to life these characters again and always seems fresh. And you can read a script of Downton, you could take out the characters' names and you know exactly who's talking because everyone's so individual. So it was great to, to see how he reimagined Downton and made it fresh again. And we have, you know, the idea of the the new world colliding with, you know, the traditions. Uh, we have that in relation to the, the film that comes in, the film within the film. And then again, the, the Crawleys out of their comfort zone in, in the south of France. So I was delighted with the story and Julian's always been very kind to, to my character, to Tom and to me as an actor. He's been, been very, very gracious. So 
I am um, I, I, I I love what happens to Tom and, and his journey and it definitely feels like this is a completion of Tom's Tom's story too. The movie opens with with Tom finding happiness again with Lucy Smith and it was a lovely kind of button at the end of the last movie was Tom and Lucy dancing outside on their own away from the royalty and, and all the pomp and ceremony and it picks up with the very happy occasion of, of Tom and Lucy's wedding. So that was wonderful to shoot as well and I had my 40th birthday on the day I got married in the show, which was fun. Tom Branson arrived in Downton as the chauffeur uh, in the first series and originally only hired for three episodes, but delighted to say that he's still around and in the movie and in this movie too, in the two movies. Uh, so he arrived as the chauffeur and fell in love with the youngest daughter, Sybil Crawley, eloped, ran away to Ireland, came back, got chased out of Ireland, wife died, stays in the uh, house, has to stay in the house, becomes a state manager starts to run the estate against his own uh, will, really. He doesn't really want to be there. He doesn't really agree with the class system. He's a socialist. Gets worn down by the family. <laughs> Has to, basically, Tom's journey is about finding acceptance and accepting himself. And what's great about the, the new movie as well is he also, he does find himself and in his new relationship as well with, uh, with Lucy Smith. So all the way up. So Tom has gone from a very revolutionary socialist to a very, very distraught widow to a state manager to definitely now part of the family. Tuppence Middleton plays Lucy Smith, who's now Lucy Branson in the new movie. And uh, it's great. It's actually the now third time that we've worked together. We did uh, The Imitation Game many, many years ago. And then obviously in the, in the first movie, and I'm delighted to see that Julian has kind of completed their story and brought them together. She's a brilliant actress and great fun to be around. It's lovely to be part of an ensemble. I mean, and that's exactly what Downton is. It is a true ensemble of incredible actors that we're so lucky to have and to be able to get back together to do this movie. It's always been a joy and it does, I know it sounds a bit cliche, but we really are like a family. We've enjoyed all of this success out of, from out of nowhere with the first series and the fact that it's still going and still so loved by the fans is, is really special. And it's, it's been such an important part of, I think, all of our lives. And any time we get, to get, get back together, it's, it's just a real treat. Downton itself, just as a show, has been a great gift, but then any time that you get to work with a true cinematic legend like Maggie is a gift, and she's always been so kind and, and, and very gracious and giving as an actor to, to all of us, I think, and every day's a school day, I always say that, but it really is. You watch Maggie work and it's, it's a joy, you know, I'd happily you know, not get paid. Don't tell Carnival or Focus, but I would happily be on set with her every day and just watching how she kind of works. And then th that character has now become so kind of symbolic of her in, in, within her career. And it's, it's a testament to who she is as an actor. She's created someone who on the page is, is written as quite a vile person, but you can't help but love her. And uh, the one thing that I've really learned is Maggie is as quick, if not quicker, than the Dowager Countess off, off set as she is on. It's definitely something that everyone was aware of in every department, within, in the crew and the cast, that when you're making something for the, for the theatres, for, for cinema, everything has to just kind of take a step up from the TV show. Not saying that the TV show didn't look beautiful and opulent, but there, there is that sense of, uh, I, I guess, uh, an extra level of awareness that you know we have to we have to fill you know the big screen, and whether it is Donald Wood's uh, design or or Andrew Dunn, who was our cinematographer, what he did and what, what looks so beautiful again. And I think it's even a level up from the first movie, not to take anything away from the first movie, but it definitely feels richer and more cinematic. And I think that it's something that every time that we keep coming back to Downton, we want to make it better. We want to make it more of an experience for people to, to enjoy. So 
I definitely feel that everyone, again, has come to the table with the idea that we did so well with the first one, now how do we even make this better? Simon's always been part of the, the family purely because he's Elizabeth's husband, Elizabeth McGovern, who plays uh, Cora. So he's always been there and he's always been a great champion of, of, of us and the success of the show. So it was a real pleasure to have him there. And he, of course, immediately became part of the family because he already is part of the family. And there was even a shorthand in how he could talk to us as a cast because we've known him for so long. And he knows the characters so well and he knows us as actors so well that it really was just delightful to have him there on set and someone that he had such a clear vision of how he wanted to make this movie Downton, but also a Simon Curtis movie. And I think that really comes across and he's done such a beautiful job. I think people really enjoy it and, and be very aware that it's, it's, it's very unique from, from what people have enjoyed of the show before. To quote Julian Fellows, it's light, lightning in a bottle. I mean, I, I, I wish I knew, cause, and so does Julian, because he said he just keep doing it over and over. I think we were so lucky, and I was so lucky to be part of this cast, but to get the caliber of, of actors that we did with that high level of story writing as well, and the fact that he is so precise in how he writes these characters, that there's, some, there's something for everyone to love in this show and hate and to get invested in. And I always find that amazing that even, especially during the pandemic, people getting in touch via social media or, or even just writing letters, that it seems to be something that it's also generational that people can enjoy whether they're, you know, 11 years old or they're 90. People really kind of warm to Tom as a character, I think because, as Julian has said before, he's kind of the tour guide within Downton because he's discovering this world in the same way that the audience are too. He's a fish out of water who's trying to figure out both the dynamics and the traditions and the rules and the etiquette. And I, I really feel very lucky that I got to be that character that kind of went on this journey that the audience were going on as well. What Downton is great at is it is pure indulgent escapism. And after the, the year and a half or two years that we've had, I think it's what people need. You know, they need something where they can kind of get lost into a completely different world. And, a lot of the time people say to me that it's a, it was a simpler time. I don't know if that's true, but people certainly, I think, look with such great nostalgia at that period in, in British history as well and, and, and with these characters that I think it's a great opportunity to get lost back in a world that, that people remember so fondly. We gather quite early on because um, apart from anything else, um, Downton Abbey is an expensive place to run and they're always looking for um, some kind of means of income. And uh, an offer is put to them that uh, it, they become a, Downton becomes a location for a British movie, a British silent film. And um, Lady Mary is uh, persuaded uh, when uh, the money that's on offer is, uh, is proffered to her. So she's very willing to, to, to take part in that. Um, at the same time, uh, the Dowager Countess uh, Lady Violet lets it be known that she has come into a bit of property. Um, but the surprising news is that she's come into a bit of property in the south of France and that it has something to do with a past relationship, I, 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 I would say, with, with, um, with a young Frenchman at the time. Miss Baxter joined the household um, a, a few years earlier and uh, as, a, um, as a lady's maid to, to Lady Cora. And he spotted in her some troubled past and wanted to help her. And she likewise has kind of spotted something in him that she found curious. Um, and they kind of slowly, very slowly, uh, formed a, a bond. And 
I think they both hope for something more, but because they've both, I suppose, been either hurt or rejected in the past, they're very tentative in, in moving forwards. And so um, perhaps to some Downton's fans' exasperation, their, their, uh, their progress towards sort of fulfilling that relationship uh, has proved um, frustratingly slow. Uh, that's not to say that fulfilment isn't on the horizon, but, uh, well, you'll have to wait and see. Miss Baxter is played by a wonderful actress called Raquel Cassidy, um, somebody who I'd wanted to work with for many years. Uh, I've been an admirer of her work for, for, for a long time. Um, and it was a joy uh, working with her. Um, we kind of clicked straight away. We had Julian wrote some beautiful scenes for us where he was exploring the the hurt uh, in both their pasts, and um, it, it, it was it was lovely sort of being able to sort of uh, talk with her and um, and the producers and, and Julian obviously and sort of uh, and how we're going to explore the, the further and burgeoning relationship. Working on Downton has been and is a kind of a, a unique experience for all of us. Um, not only because of the success of the show, uh, which was kind of revelatory really, um, but also it's very rare that British actors get to work together for so long. And so whenever we do come back together, you know, especially if it's been two or three years since we last met, it's kind of, uh, there's a kind of a celebration in the air. And um, I don't want to understate that, actually. I mean, it really is a celebration. And, um, and so any time that uh, there's a moment in the script where it looks as if a lot of us are going to be together, then uh, it's kind of, it, those moments are really embraced. Um, so it's, it, I mean, it's always about the people that you work with, really, and uh, and over the over that sort of ten year period, some very very strong bonds have been cr created. Uh, you know, lifelong friendships. Maggie uh, comes with a lot of um, comes with a lot of baggage because. Uh, well, she she is um, she is a legend, um, uh, and it's somebody that I personally have kind of uh, I never dreamt that I'd work with her. And so, when you know that you're going to be working with somebody like her, then it's uh, you know you can be a little bit nervous, and you know nobody will blame you for that. Um, and and I and I was, and uh, but she's you know. She's an old hoofer, you know. She, 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 she's, uh, you know, she talks often about her sort of song and dance years early on, and uh, and uh, you know, she's a dame in many ways, um, but she's a, just a, an absolute joy, a joy. Whenever Julian writes these scripts. He always puts in something new that you learn about your character when you read it. For instance, in the previous film, I, I learned that uh, he was an ardent royalist, uh, which I hadn't, you know, uh, I hadn't realised before. And uh, so you have to embrace that. You have to come at that with a lot of enthusiasm. And likewise, in this film, uh, you, you learn that he lives for the movies. Any spare time that he has, he will be off to the cinema and... Um, it's been used as a as, a, as an excuse to take uh, Miss Baxter on, on one or two occasions, and uh, so he he loves movies. He he loves that kind of uh, the idea of Hollywood, of sort of escape or um, fantasy, or um, and so the, the chance that he gets to sort of watch them being made is just absolutely fascinated by.
There was a moment when we were filming one of the scenes uh, which, which appeared towards the end of the film and uh, Simon Curtis, our director, uh, turned to me and said, um, this, these 10 minutes of Molesley's life are life-changing. So he, w within 10 minutes, he, uh, his life completely changes. And it's, um, it was, it was a, a gift to, to, to be able to play those moments. Um, but it, it was just sort of extraordinary. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it is interesting, his, his path and his, um, his relationship with, with the people who watch Downton. Because uh, I think he was viewed as a, to begin with, he was viewed as a figure of suspicion. Uh, I, people didn't really get him at the beginning, which was interesting, because uh, he's, you know, he made moves on Anna quite early on, uh, while Bates was away, um, and uh, and so uh, it took people a, a little while to forgive him for that, uh, and, but slowly he's kind of crept into the hearts of. Of, of fans, and I'm relieved about that because um, I think he's uh, he's got a big heart. But I've wanted to work with Simon Curtis, our director, f for for years now. Actually, I, I've um, I've admired his work um, as a theatre director, first of all. And then more recently in television and film, I, I just think his body of work has been extraordinary. And so just getting to meet him through Elizabeth, he's married to Elizabeth. Um, so he was, uh, he was around on set when we were shooting the TV series. And he would, he would sometimes come in and say hello. And uh, so it was, a, it was a, a real joy to find out that he was going to be directing this movie. I, it didn't occur to me that he... But of course, why shouldn't he? Why, why wouldn't he? He's there. He knows the world. So, uh, of course, he should direct it. It made complete sense. Um, but it was... Uh, yeah, oh, he was great. Uh, he, but because he, he knows that world, he, there was a kind of a... Sh there was already a shorthand... Um, he, he knew the characters already. Um, uh, so he, he, he was just fabulous and so supportive and uh, we were able to rehearse and uh, there, were, there were important scenes that needed to be rehearsed and he always sort of um, made sure that we had that rehearsal time. So it was an oh, absolute joy. Couldn't have asked for anything better. I had watched every episode, and uh, but uh, my greatest admiration, well, two, I had such admiration for the ensemble, the group, the actors, uh, but also I'd always admired Julian Fellows, but working on the film, that even skyrocketed because he's such a genius at giving everybody a story, uh, these telling moments of humour and emotion uh, that characterise the show. Uh, he's a genius at that, and that was very rewarding to work out each time we set up a scene, you know, what was the important emotional beat. And uh, I saw uh, the cherry orchard on the stage last week, and I was just thinking, Julian is the equal of Anton Chekhov in that. You know, that uh, his Chekhov's plays are about a, a, a family, meaning the servants, the, the, the family all in a house, and uh, that's what Downton Abbey is. And uh, I think that's why uh, it resonates with people because yes, it's a very specific moment in time, but it's also incredibly universal because everybody is treated with respect and uh, no matter their age or their class or uh, their, their role, uh, Julian gives everybody a humanity and a dignity. I thought it was a very satisfying script that brought to a resolution so many of the stories in a very, very satisfying way. And, and even more than the first film, it gave our key characters really great storylines. When everyone gets back to Downton from the wedding, 
they're greeted with some a bombshell information where Violet reveals that out of the blue, apparently, she's been left a gorgeous villa in the south of France. And so that kicks off a mystery that involves a trip to France to uh, uncover the, 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 the real story behind that. I'd had experience um, working with a big ensemble, but you know that's the really intimidating thing about directing Downton, which I'm sure all the previous directors have, have also felt, which is that there's no such thing as an easy scene in Downton. And even it would be like, they cut the cake, uh, we get ready to rehearse, and I'd see half of British equity coming up to the, towards the camera. And uh, you know there'd be a scene that in another film page and a half scene uh, dialogue would be something you could just rush off but then you actually got to it and you realize that in fact being Julian it was four mini scenes within that scene four different clusters of conversations that all needed coverage and took their time so that was the most intimidating thing just the amount of people in every scene let alone when you do a film within a film where you've got our own crew the fake crew and uh, the characters you know and uh, uh, I mean there was one scene which is the, the, the big dinner party scene within the film, within the film, uh, where I think it took us three days and there were over 50 setups, you know, so uh, that's definitely intimidating. I think, you know, I think the role of a director uh, is to help everybody on both sides of the camera do their best work, you know, and the last thing this group of actors needed was someone to come in and tell them how to play characters they'd already been playing for 10 years. Um, so it was, you know, allowing them to make a lot of decisions uh, and not being, uh, 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 not being threatened by that is a big part of directing in this kind of situation. So it is the first time they've gone abroad. And, uh, you know, that was tricky, both, you know, in story terms, but also in production terms, because due to COVID, we didn't know we were going to France till a couple of weeks before we actually went. And we, the studio rightly had asked us to prepare UK locations to, to, to serve as France, should we not be able to go. And in fact, I'd never even been to the location until we went there to film. Uh, but, you know, I'd seen obviously video of this gorgeous house, and so I fought to go there. And uh, it was a very special experience for us all to be there, you know, particularly after lockdown and the end of the film and the end of an era, if you like. Well, the production values were always pretty high for the show. Um, but obviously on a film you have more time. Uh, and, you know, the trip to France, that in itself is giving it scale. And it makes it feel different. Um, so you just, you know, we were ambitious with the scenes and the sequences, um, uh, and it does feel like a very cinematic experience, I think. I was thrilled to uh, get Andrew Dunn to be the DOP. Uh, you know, I've, I've admired his work hugely for a long time. And of course, he shot Gosford Park, which is the godfather of Downton Abbey. So. And of course, you know, his work is very cinematic. I think he's made over 70 films, uh, and most recently the Lee Daniel films that are so, so great. And um, it was a real honor that he, he, he came on board and he delivered a fantastic job. I mean, to be perfectly honest, you know, I was so confident they knew what they were doing. Uh, I let that, left them to their own devices, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, the costumes are, are phenomenal and, you know, I love the, the makeup, but, you know, the, the contrast, say, between Jack Barber uh, and the men in the house, you know, the slightly longer hair and so on uh, is great. And uh, you know, they are key, key components of the look of this film. I would go for even more comedy. It was left up to me. And I think, again, that goes back to the, the, the Chekhov, the Cherry Orchard, where, you know, those Russians are crying one minute and laughing the next. And uh, it's also a bit like, I always think, like the old musical, where there'd be a juggler followed by an opera singer, followed by a drama, followed by a comedic comedian. And, and Julian's like that. He offers, there's a funny bit, then a, a heartbreaking bit, then a drama bit. And uh, uh, finding out what the right beat was and making 
the funny thing as funny as possible and the emotional thing as emotional as possible is all our job on a film like this. It's a very specific moment in time. And, you know, it's not that everything in 1929 was great for the people who lived at that time, but there were things and elements of that life that are, seem enviable now, where, you know, you, people did all work together. And what Julian does is give everybody uh, a dignity and a humanity, uh, whether they're young or old or um, whatever their job or class is. And uh, I think people respond to that, that, you know, that, that the, the kitchen maid and the lady of the house are equally important in the mix of it. And I think that is society working together, which we can only hope we do do. The, the first film, I think it landed at a time in the midst of Brexit and Trump where uh, people were nostalgic, actually not for the 1920s, but for pre the five years earlier, and they used to sit and be happy on a Sunday night with their family. And I think, I hope this film will land at a time where, particularly coming out of the, the, the pandemic that's been so difficult for so many people all over the world. Uh, and of course, let's not forget, this is a group of characters who'd come through a pandemic. And in fact, one of the characters in the, in the, in the, the film uh, refers to her sister having died of the Spanish flu. And, uh, uh, you know, this, this is a group of people on the other side of a pandemic. And I, I hope, this is the story uh, for people on the other side of a pandemic, let's hope, and uh, that it will be a sort of comforting and amusing and emotional escape for a couple of hours for people all over the world. She discovers that she's going to come inherit this fabulous uh, villa in the south of France. So that becomes this mystery that the family need to solve. So um, some of the family, including Edith, go and visit this villa. And that really is because Edith is, she's interested in writing again. She's sort of um, back to taking back control of the magazine. And yeah, the south of France at this time was becoming a holiday destination, which is new. That hadn't been um, something that uh, that people did. The hotels would close in the summer because everyone thought it was too hot. So Edith wants to go and write a fabulous article about it and, uh, and yeah, find out what Granny's been up to as well. It's always such a joy to get the new scripts and, uh, and yeah, this one didn't disappoint. It's, it's completely full of... Um, you know, sort of fun moments with all of the characters you love. And he takes it in a completely different direction, which is sort of, you know, a new era is is seeing a, the modern world come to Downton in a different way than we've seen before. There's always a bit of a challenge for the, for the Aristos, but in this movie we see Hollywood come to Downton, we see the film company arrive. And yeah, it, so many hilarious moments come from that. Um, and yeah, I think when you're part of a film crew and a company, you know what it's like to kind of take over a, a house or a castle, like Highclere Castle. And so to be sort of part of that within the movie and see how that feels for the Crawley family is, is really funny. I love working with Harry. He is such a joy. He's so funny. And yeah, we really enjoy um, messing about a bit, I think. And, um, and I think we're both really fond of our characters and the relationship that they have. And we sort of really um, push for them to remain as, as modern seeming as, as possible, I think, because they do, they feel like the new generation, and I think that's really important to, to Harry and I. I mean, it's amazing. We have really grown together, and uh, yeah, it was one of my first ever jobs, so it was a real education for me, and I felt, you know, I've had the best time learning from these incredible actors. And yeah, we now take these breaks and come back together, which has been a real treat. 
And uh, yeah, shooting the films, it's really fun because it's it's short. It's not as as um, time consuming as this filming a series, but yeah, they always feel like a celebration. So it was a real laugh getting together again. I mean, I feel so lucky to have worked with Maggie and to have worked with Maggie for so long and truly to call her a friend is, you know, it's a privilege. And uh, yeah, we we all have a good giggle. Like she's, she's very naughty, she's very witty on set. Um, and she's just sort of always right. <laughs> I think she's got incredible taste and um, yeah, she really sees things in moments that, um, that no one else will pick up on. And yeah, her turn of phrase, you know, the way that she says the lines that don't read like the funny lines, they don't read always like the one-liners, it's in amongst something. She'll find a way of saying it that it's suddenly, you know, people want it on a poster. It's kind of the, it's her gift. I really loved getting to know Tuppence. Um, we had a bit together in the first film, but more this year, and um, and we got to go to France together. So uh, that was great fun. She's just gorgeous, and she uh, sort of we had a little foursome of uh, the Bransons and the Pelhams trying to figure out what Violet has been up to. So and yeah, at that time in France was just such great fun. We were all in our incredible South France wardrobe, and yeah, we had a brilliant time. Yeah, the costumes this time is such fun. I mean, whenever we go back to Downton, obviously it's getting later and later, and that's fun for the girls, really, because the the more we move into the 20s, the, the hemlines come up and we see women in trousers. Um, so, yeah, it was great fun for me. Edith this year has... Um, has a fantastic wardrobe. <laughs> when she goes to France, she has this fantastic sort of vacation look. So I'm wearing lots of wide, you know, silk trousers and um, caminos and headscarves. And it's just so glamorous and so of the location and of the place. And, uh, you know, it felt fantastic. It was really, really fun. And I always think that's it. They always up the ante and, um, and yeah, the film's no exception. Anna Robbins, our costume designer, she, she'll she do lots of different things. She'll find original pieces. Um, she'll try and um, sort of find examples of ideas she's had. And she'll find costume, well, you know, original pieces um, from around the world. She gets a lot from Paris, and I know she got quite a lot from America um, for the film as well. And yeah, we'll try them, and if there's any way we can use the original, we will, but if it's um, too damaged or the fit's not quite right, we might remake it or try it in a different color, or yeah, it's great fun. Well, we have more time per minute, you know, to, to shoot what we, we have um, to make. And that does allow everyone um, it's just a chance to really flex their muscles, I think. Um, whether that's costume or hair and makeup or, um, you know, our, our props and settings, it's really that much more dramatic. And the sort of depth of field of what you're looking at in the picture is, is just that much greater. And yeah, when we were in France, I couldn't really get over the villa. I had, I don't know what I pictured, but maybe, I don't know, smaller and rustic almost. And it's, you know, Vast. It feels kind of like Beverly Hills to me. <laughs> it's very glamorous. Um, but yeah, these marble staircases and, you know, palm trees stretching down to the sea. And it is stunning. Um, so I'm just, I'm so pleased that they've captured it all on film because you just couldn't believe what you were seeing, really. It was so wonderful working with Simon. He's obviously married to my mama. Um, so we've known him for years and he's always been 
so supportive and a champion of everyone in the cast. I really feel like that. And um, so to get a chance to work with him was amazing. And yeah, he knew everyone's storyline. He knew everyone's history. And that brought so much to the show because he really knew the dynamics and um, what he could stretch out and what he could pull out of each beat, which is so much a part of the show. So much about what's not said as well, particularly between the upstairs and downstairs. You don't want to miss what the servants are not saying in a scene filled with the upstairs lot chatting away. And he really got that. And yeah, I mean, it really added as well to the feeling of, you know, a family working together and traveling together. It felt like we were on a holiday. Um, and yeah, that was really special. I think that one of the things that appeals about Downton is it's sort of, it's so hopeful. I think it doesn't want to write anyone off as the baddies. And, um, you know, Julian always wants to see from all sides. And he writes from a kind of understanding that he believes that everyone deep down has good in them. And, um, and so therefore it's very comforting. It's not only is it glamorous and, um, and all the rest of it, sort of escapism, but it it's hopeful. And I think that's why it's so nice to go back to. And I think, yeah, post pandemic, I think will be a treat for everyone to sort of switch off and enjoy seeing these characters they know and love. And, um, and, it, and it's very funny, it's very warm. Um, but yeah, I think it, it makes you feel good, really. Audiences should go to the cinema to watch the movie because it is just so lavish and lush. And yeah, I mean, I mean, France, but also the movie, it's, it's so fun. And I think really should be enjoyed on a big screen. And yeah, you can go with your family and your pals and really have a giggle. And uh, yeah, we really hope people enjoy it. <laughs>
onto the screen. It's like having like a summer holiday and then going back to school. It's like you're nervous. Um, you're, I think everyone feels nervous like before the read through, da, 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 and then as soon as you see everyone, you're sort of straight back into, um, you know, old friendships and relationships. And we see each other in between um, a little bit. But with lockdown and stuff, it was kind of extra, it sort of felt even more special to all be coming back. And, and really, you know, because of Gareth and producers and Liz, like making it happen as one of the first films to come back and really work after the lockdown, it was very special to even just be working and then to be all together again was extra special. So we just felt very, very lucky. And, and it's the thing with Downton, like you, it goes and then it comes back again and you just can't believe that you get to do this thing again with these people because they really are such a lovely bunch, and not just the actors, you know, it's the crew, it's everyone, right from the producers down to, to runners and drivers and da da, da you know, it's all such a lovely bunch. But she's unbelievable. She's Maggie, Dame Maggie Smith, I mean, she's incredible. She's, I think she's, she takes Julian's lines and she just, I, I don't see how she, like, you read the script, you read her lines and go, yeah, and then you see her do it, and she's just done something completely different and brilliant and hilarious. And like, she just, she's just incredible. So, it's all of the film crew coming to Downton. So, with that, you know, it's Dominic West, um, Laura Haddix, um, Hugh Dancy, the director, and uh, Alex McQueen, who plays uh, Stubbins, sound engineer, and uh, you know, that, those new characters coming in, that's why he's so clever, Julian, because they are, they're outside of the group. They're outside, they're, they're completely fresh faces. They're bringing new energy to the, to, the, to, the, um, to the set anyway. And so, you know, for me, seeing Dominic West is like, whoa, that's, you know, it does, he's huge, you know, I love The Wire and da, da. And they were great. They slotted straight in. They were really fun. They were, they were brilliant. And Alex is absolutely hilarious. Hilarious, and when say so we had a Zoom, like read through because of COVID, and I saw his face pop up, and I was like, "Oh my God, this guy! He's going to be in it. He's so good, and he's perfect for the role." And he was absolutely unbelievable. He's such a nice guy. I mean, it was awesome. Like when we read that that was going to be. You know, the the, the family were going to go out there. We're like, really, this is going to be absolutely incredible, and and also really. When, so, you know, talking about like Maggie and stuff, they, they have stories about whether they, they would go to the south of France and film these amazing, you know, the old, old kind of Hollywood filming acting stories. And now it feels like everyone in the cast has got sort of, oh yeah, I remember when we went to the south of France to do this film. Like it feels a bit of a dream. And, uh, and they managed to make it work with COVID and everything. And it still felt like a really amazing experience. And, the footmen who came in were great, and uh, they didn't take much tweaking, but um, but that was fun, a different sort of role, um, and and also having seen some of the stuff with on boats and the, the villa and stuff, it's absolutely incredible. It looks it looks magic. And it's raised the thing again, like it raised from the series to the first film. It kind of had to expand and become something bigger, and now it feels like it's done it again. And I don't know how they keep on doing that, but they do. <laughs> Simon Curtis definitely is part of the Downton family. I mean, he's been there kind of all the way along because of Elizabeth McGovern. And um, so he came in, he sort of came in knowing everything. Like he, he's, he's great. I mean, I love working with him. He's got an amazing attention to detail. He knows everyone's character very acutely. Like he, and he, and he has ideas about everyone, which, which for a big cast is really, is a real skill because, you know, if you're not on that day, if your character's not doing that much, you don't, is, you want to feel like you're invested in every scene or you're like, your character's got a thread through every scene. And he does that, like he, he was an absolute joy. And we, yeah, I think everyone would say they loved, loved working with him. He was brilliant. And, and yeah, and he got sort of, it's not an easy 
I imagine it's not an easy thing to come into where the style, the tone of it is already decided in lots of ways. And how do you come in and put your own stamp on it? So he has to have that conversation with Gareth, um, Neem, producer, and Liz Truebridge, and kind of navigate his way through that. But everyone felt like he just came in with this new, refreshed energy, which was absolutely brilliant. I think it's changed. Like, you know, we've had answered the question quite a lot. And I think early on, I felt like it was um, universal themes of like love and um, regret and jealousy. Da -da. And then in its context today, I feel like where this film comes out today, it's more about escape and joyful and a kind of indulging in a decadence that. I feel like you know the first film was was a joyful thing, but this feels like it's become it's just it's just a happy, joyful escape for two hours, like, and I feel like that's its importance now, um, which is I think it's evolved into that.